Hi, good morning. So, let's start with uh, lecture 10 of quantum physics for non physicists, and today is the 15th of October. So, we will start today. Uh, we'll talk about the double slit experiment, and we'll at least start talking about this. We might continue in the next lecture. We'll see, this depends on time. Uh, so, in particular, we'll talk about interference and we'll talk about observables. There's not really a good chapter in the book for this, but there's a lecture by Sandro Popescu that covers more or less the same material. He goes into more detail in some things, uh, which I will upload to the same channel as uh, where uh, you watch the lectures on YouTube. Okay, so the daily, daily analogy has to do with, uh, with the lecture material, so let me just do the housekeeping first. Uh, next Thursday, I will put a lecture on YouTube a bit before the time and I will not do it on Zoom because I need to take my kid to the doctor and nothing, but it's just at the same time as a lecture. Um, also, I mean, I often make typos while writing, so when reading through the notes or, or watching the lecture, it should be a bit critical. So in particular, I noticed that in the last two lectures, whenever I had a power series um, of an exponential, I just kept uh, losing all the denominators. So I went back and I put them where I found them in the in the lecture notes, if you see some more, uh, let me know. Okay, so I should upload this today. Okay, so the daily analogy is about obsolete dualities. So for this, I have to explain a little bit of what the double slit experiment is. Uh, and this is the idea that we have some, some source of light or electrons or protons or atoms. And we send them uh, through a wall that has only two little slits. Okay. So what happens is that, well, this is a very classical image, is that there's like, one way to look at it would be that there's like a particles propagating either from there or from there, okay? And then the question is, what happens? And what happens is that we see uh, a pattern here. So on this, this wall on the right is like a, a screen and we see a pattern here that looks like this. I'll show you more in the, in the next um, page. But for now, we can see that it looks like this. And one, one, one way to think about it is that, oh, this is like waves. Okay, there was a wave coming here. There was another wave coming here. And just like sound waves or, uh, or waves in the sea, uh, there's an interference pattern between the two waves. We'll get into details of what this means. So light is a wave, electrons are a wave, um, uh, protons are a wave, atoms are a wave. Okay. But then the other thing one can do, which uh, we'll go into, I think, next week, is try to observe here whether they come from, whether they go through this slit or that slit. Okay. And in that case, the pattern you, you see at the end is more like one big blob here and one blip big blob there. Okay, you don't see this interference pattern. So then people would say, well, no, 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 it turns out it acts exactly like the particle because if you're shooting bullets through here, this is more or less the, the distribution that you, you'd expect to find. And a lot um, has been said, especially in popular science about this wave particle duality and trying to make a big deal of whether quantum particles are waves or are particles, oh, yes behave like waves, behaves like particles into worse things. And, um, and I think a good an analogy for this, if you have the right mindset, uh, is the concept of gender. And people will try to say that, oh, you're only a woman or you're only a man and there's only these two options and you are what you are born with, etc. cetera. Uh, when one sensible response could be, look, the concept of Gender, the reality of it in nature is much more complex than what your, your duality has. And like this duality of trying to fit everything into uh, your previous ideas of what a man is or what a woman is, it's neither helpful nor accurate of reality, okay? What the, the thing that really exists, uh, the gender concept behind it is actually uh, something else, which in some cases, okay, will fit into your categories, but in general does not. 
Because it's the same thing, like why, why being obsessed with whether it's a, a particular wave? We actually have a formalism for quantum mechanics that explains this exactly uh, why it has this behavior in the double slit experiment, which we'll go into today, uh, and try to fit it into these categories of, uh, of wave or particle is just trying to keep our outdated ideas of how the world work in face of new evidence, which is a silly way to go about science. So you can use this to explain gender to your physicist friends or vice versa. Okay, so let's see now the double slit experiment and I have a, oh, no, before that, let me just recap where we are in the lecture in our, in our tree. So we've done almost everything now of the, the part be before we, we bring in uncertainty. So on blue is things that we've done in the tutorials and we'll keep doing in the, tu in the tutorials. Today we'll do the double slit and we might continue next week, I think we will. And then the other thing that we'll do next week is a particle in a, in a potential, so not a free particle, but in, in some kind of square potential. Uh, and after this, then we can finally start with, with uncertainty. Okay, so here's my animation. So this is the experiment when made with electrons. And the idea is that you shoot one electron at a time and the white dots here is where they hit the final screen, okay? So you shoot 10 electrons and it looks like this. This picture is from, it's from uh, Wikipedia. Oh, it's kind of, and then you shoot a few more and it starts looking like that. And a few more and it starts looking like that. And so on. And at some point you have a pattern that is a clear it's a very clear kind of interference pattern, okay? So even if you shoot one particle at a time, you still see this kind of interference, which cannot be explained with, uh, I don't know, maybe many particles, like in a wave, like in an actual wave made of, um, of water, you have like the little droplets of water and they are the ones that are interfering with each other. But here is no, it's like you shoot just one droplet at a time and you still see this interference and the question is how? So let me just tell you what interference is in general before we go into the double slit experiment. Okay. So and what this is, so let's take some Hilbert space and Hilbert space for, for it could be again the um, the line. And now let's take a, a stage, which is a superposition of two states. Okay. And the double slit is something that gives us an example of this, which we'll see in a moment. Yeah. So we have alpha square plus beta square modulo is one. Good. And so how do we how can we express this, for example, in the position basis where we have that by one is some sum dx, the wave function of one, and the same for psi two, dx, psi two of x, x. And so if you want to do the full state, you have alpha, this thing, the first one. So all the integrals are still from minus infinity to infinity. I'll just not write them all the time. Integral dx, side to x, okay. And this is just the integral dx of alpha plus beta, whoop, psi two of x, x, okay. And this, of course, is our new wave function. Okay. Now, note that, um, 
this thing here, it's a complex number. And this thing here is another complex number, right? Even if they were real numbers, they're not necessarily both positive numbers is what matters here. And the probability, what is the probability, for example, of finding the particle of making a position measurement and finding the particle between x0 and x0 plus delta. Well, we saw that this is just the, the inner product of this with the measurement projector. And what's the measurement projector? It's just the integral from x0 to x0 plus delta of x, x, dx, check, right? So this is what uh, is the projector corresponding to this outcome, right? As we saw before a few times. And now if we replace this, um, if we replace this with this stage, we get as per usual, just the integral from x0 to x0 plus delta. The module of the wave function square dx, right? So which means that the probability of finding uh, the particle in a certain region of space will depend on on the, the modular square of this quantity here, okay? So, uh, let me just write it again. So we have x equals alpha by one of x plus beta by two of x, okay? And now we have two kind of interesting cases, one which we call constructive interference And that's when this is kind of much larger than each of them individually. And we'll see an example in a moment. And we have destructive interference when it's much smaller. Ooh. Okay, that was totally faster than writing it again. Good. So, for example, and this is an example that will be relevant later. And let's see if I can draw it nicely. So, so this is x. And now we have the first wave function being something like this. It's a cosine. And now, so this is, or just say, just say, just the real part of the of the wave function, for example. And let's make here the second one, uh, light blue. So this is going to be now the second wave function. And I'll, I'll tell you in a moment why I'm writing real parts. So suppose that they are actually kind of perfectly aligned. Right. Then the top, then the total wave function is going to be um, the sum of these two, adjusted with the coefficients alpha and delta, which means that then the the wave function square would be something like 
Hop. Vroom. 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 Right, this would be. Okay. And in fact, if then we join the, the imaginary part for, for, for standard waves, then it would actually just be there. But we'll see this in a moment. However, now suppose they are out of phase, which means that this one starts maybe a bit there. Okay. So then what happens is that there are some regions where they interfere positively, which means, for example, like here, they're both smaller than zero, right? So here in this region. Okay. In this region, they're both larger than zero. So again, they'll interfere positively, assuming that alpha and beta, for example, are both positive. Right. And here in this region, they're again the same sign, and here they have the same sign, etc. So in these regions, the total wave function would actually be very positive, would be something like, I don't know, tall, 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 tall. Okay. However, there are regions where they have opposite signs, like whoop, here the light blue is positive and the other one is still negative. Okay, so they kind of cancel each other out. Here the same, here the same, here the same, right? Which means that in the end, if we look at the interference pattern, if you look at precisely something like like this, you'd see exactly this. So you'd see some fringes uh, like this, which is where both waves were positive or both waves were negative. So there's lots of uh, particles hitting there. The probability that the particle actually hit there is high. So you see this hitting there. And areas where they kind of almost cancel out. So the probability of finding an electron there is very, very small. Okay. And this is true for each electron because this is just a wave function of each electron. But this, what we saw here, would be like the final wave function once we reach the wall. And we have to see how we get there. Okay. So now let's see how we get there. From the beginning of the double set. Okay. So we say, let's say at time equals zero. We have, this is our wall. Okay, and there's some spacing here, L, between the two slits that's much larger than the opening of, of each of the slits, right? And we're gonna have some waves coming out of here, moving this way, and, oh, and something coming out of there, like this. O of which we imagine that is that we had some particle here moving this way, and it had a big wave function. Then it was, for example, a Gaussian wave function like we've seen before, but now only this little bit and this little bit are allowed to go through. Okay. So how can we model this? First, let's see in general what is a, how does a, a wave packet look? So. A wave package. This was when phi of x. And let's call this phi left. Is, for example, e i k x check of x. Okay, where this was, for example, a Gaussian. In this case, it could be, for example, more of a truncated Gaussian. Because, you know, usually the Gaussian has very long tails, but now the slits and there and there, so we don't want to let that go through. Go. Well, first of all, 
what is e to the i k x if we just expand this this is just oh, cos of k x plus i sine of k x which means that the, the total wave function looks a bit like this. So let me draw here. X. First, let me draw here the So this is what we saw is called the envelope. It's this kind of Gaussian or almost Gaussian or truncated Gaussian thing and then inside you have this oscillating wave so oh sorry let's uh make this symmetric so I can... this is minus good so anyway it looks like this this should be the cos kx times sine of x, which is the real part of the wave function. And the imaginary part is the sine, which is just the same, but just a bit uh, just shifted, right? Which means when one goes. Uh, so here it should be 0. True, 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 true. You know what I mean. True, 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 true. Okay. Something like that. So that's sine of kx, which is the imaginary part of the wave function. Okay, but now we have two of these terms. And again, we imagine that like this form came from the, from the mother wave, meaning the wave that was there before it hit the, the two slits, okay? So we can imagine that we have a total, um, A total wave function, which is, well, it's going to be a superposition of something on the left plus something on the right over square root of two. And if we want to write them as a function of each other, we can think that, well, maybe uh, the L of x plus L equals this, meaning that. I have my little wave function here, which is just a shifted version of the little wave function there. At least we want the envelope to be the same form, just shifted by L, okay? But of course, they could, be, they could have a different phase. So we can write here the phase. Well, this would be the phase of, of the one on the left, and this is the phase of the one on the right. Good, so this is just a model for what comes out of the double slit. So the phase really just tells us how shifted these oscillations are relative to each other, which will depend of course on the, com on the size of L uh, and its relation to the original frequency of the wave. Okay, good, so now, we just rewrite this, we take out this phase for the left wave function, took L plus E, I, what's left here is right minus left, right, over square root of two. Uh, this thing here, we're just going to call um, alpha, 
the difference between phases. So it's the relative phase between the two waves. Oh, sorry, and I meant to. Um, to do it like this. But now this phase we don't care about so much, the, this initial phase here. Why? Because for any observable, for any observable on the global Hilbert space that we have here, well, let's say observable M, we know that the outcomes or the average, for example, of M is going to be phi high, which is just going to be E minus I alpha L, E I L. And then let's call this thing here. Let's call this whole thing here. In the brackets, let's call this phi alpha, psi alpha, OK? And that's psi alpha and psi alpha. And this thing here, we know this is just one. Okay. So we don't care about the global phase, which means we work directly with this psi alpha. So we saw it's one over square root of two, check left, plus e to the i alpha the right wave function, okay? And we know that they have these properties, so we know that psi of x plus l equals right of x. And there's one more property, which is that they never overlap, right? We are here in the, in the initial stage still, they never overlap. Where one is non-zero, the other one is zero in the very initial state. Of course, and then later they will evolve and and they'll overlap, that's the whole point, but for now they don't. So um, we can write it like this. For all x, right? If you multiply the two, then you may as well take the complex conjugate, doesn't do anything. If you multiply the two wave functions, this is going to be zero for all positions. OK. Good. So now, after evolution, what we have? Well, we'll have alpha of time. It is u of t. The initial wave function. Sorry, the initial stage, which is just alpha u of t left. Sorry, not alpha. We know what alpha is, it's one over square root of two in this case, plus u of t, which has nothing to do with our little alpha. So I'll put here e to the i alpha. Right. Okay. So now we have two options. So one to to find out what happens. Uh, let me write here. One is to actually evolve. L and U of T, the right one, they are the same, sum, and find out what happens, okay? So in fact, let me move all of this to the next page so I can put a drawing there. And we already have some idea of what happens, right? Because we saw what happens to the free evolution um, of, a, of a Gaussian uh, wave packet. So there's no Hamiltonian here. 
is uh, sorry, the Hamiltonian is just given by the momentum square. It's a free particle, and it's moving. So what will happen is that it stays with it stays with the same momentum, but it will just get um, it will just get more spread out, right? So we will see what happens. So it, it's going to be kind of like this, where you left the envelope of one is going to become very big and spread. This will be the one on the left, for example. And the envelope of the one on the right is going to be also very big and spread. Something like this. Okay. And then you'll have, for example, just the real part is going to be this very beautifully drawn cosine. And of the other one is going to be the same with the face. Right. Oh, sorry. This is wrong. It's going to be the one with, with the same frequency, but a phase. And a different envelope. Okay. And so on. And so you will, we will observe here directly again this kind of fringes where, for example, here we see a lot of interference. There we see a lot of interference, of positive interference. I don't know, here, for example. And it, give, it will give us exactly this nice pattern. Okay, so this would be the, whoop, the real of psi right of time t. And this would be the real of psi left of time t. Okay, so this is one thing that we, we are going to do. Maybe not all in the lecture, maybe some in the tutorials because it's a bit tedious at some point. But the other thing we can do is say, well, the evolution is a unitary evolution that does not depend on the phase at all, right? It's just, you know, h is just p squared over two mu. And so all the information about interference must be already somehow contained um, in this state here, in this initial state. So there must be some observable that we could measure that will, will tell us what the, what the interference will be. And this observable should depend in particular on the phase because we know that the pattern of interference depends on the phase. Okay. So this is option B is to look for observables. at time, at the initial time, so on this say alpha, that tell us about interference. So this is what Sandu does in his lectures. And it's what we'll do now because we have we have ten minutes, so we'll start with that, and we'll do the other, uh, the actual evolution of the free particle. We'll do path one uh, on Tuesday. Okay, so we'll do now path path two. Two. And the observables we're going to look at, well, first we're going to look at x and powers of x. We're going to look at the momentum, powers of momentum, and then we'll see others. We'll see what. Okay. And the idea being, well, this depends on the, um, of, of course, interference depends on position, so maybe looking at the position observable now can already tell us something about interference in the future. Okay, and so let's see what happens. If we look, for example, at the average position, well, then we have 
is just by alpha x alpha. And what is this? Well, took of dx bar of x bar. And here's the integral. All these integrals are from minus infinity to plus infinity times this is x is just a number. And now here comes again. Tuck, tuck. Check, check. Whoop, I forgot here. The bra, and here comes the kit. Good. We multiply these things. We know that x and x prime gives us a, this and this gives us a delta function. This and this gives us another delta function. This should be x, tuck, tuck. Good. So overall, what is left is just dx. of x, x, of x, okay? Good, so now this x here is not doing anything. We can just put it here. So now let's just expand this coefficients and see what we get. Oh, sorry, expand the, the wave functions. So the x we have here. Uh, Okay, we'll have one over square root of two from the left and one over square root of two from the right. So overall we have one half. And now we have phi left of x plus e to di alpha phi right of x. Okay, little x. And because it's a complex conjugate, we put them there. I left of um, x plus e i phi right of x. Okay, good. So now we have a few terms. So we just split them into different, even different um, integrals. So it's going to be took dx x times something plus dx x times something. Plus took dx x times something. Okay. The first one we have ch of x l of x. The second we have uh, Let's say the second is going to be this term, this term, that is L of x e to the i alpha, say right of x. Now we have e to minus i alpha, say right of x star, say left of x, and the final term is e to minus i alpha of x, i, and I forgot here, e to i, okay, good. So now we can analyze this. Let's do so. Okay. Uh, we can look at the second term. So this second term, this is not doing anything. It's just a number, okay? So you can move it there. It doesn't matter. But now we have psi L at the point X and psi right at the point X. But we said they never overlap, so this is always zero. Okay, so this term is zero. And the same here because we have, on the next one, we have uh, the con complex conjugate of the right at the point X and L at the x, so this is also zero. And on the last term, just the phases cancel out. Okay, so we end up with just the first term and this last term, which neither of them depends on alpha. Okay, so this whole thing 
does not depend on alpha, which means that if the if the wave function on, on the right was shifted a little bit more, a bit less, uh, any measurement of the position now would not be able to detect this. But we know that we need this, we need to be able to detect the phase in order to know about the interference in the future because it depends a lot on uh, how the two wave functions are shifted relative to each other, right? So it cannot be, x is not our solution. By the way, neither is x to any power of n because the only difference here would be putting the power n there, power n, power n, 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 n. Doesn't change anything again. Okay, fine. So now let's look at the momentum because you know momentum determines um, evolution. So you might think maybe momentum is the one. So we get we we do it a bit faster indirectly. So you get. We know the momentum acts on the wave function. So the x, this is the one on the left, and the, the x of the one on the right. Right, it acts like this, as we saw a million times. So h bar. And now we get the x. Let's put here this one still this one and now we have d dx of what uh you didn't understand why they cancel why what cancels sorry we have a question here psi l and psi r okay because look what will um what we're comparing here is psi L at a position X and psi R at a position X. And this is for the initial state. So they're just right out of the slit. They are in this position. So wherever, for all the X where psi L is non-zero, psi right is zero, right? For example, if X is here, then if psi L being non-zero and psi right being zero, they are not Gaussians. Okay. But where psi, the right wave function is non-zero, the left one is zero. So this was, uh, where did we put this condition? Somewhere, yeah, we put it here. Right, so they are relative to each other, they're kind of just a shifted version plus the phase. And we know that they're never zero. So if the two slits were, were very, very close to each other, then this would not be true. But, the, but because we have this condition, like they're far away, then this is true. Okay. So if you continue for the momentum, then we get here. We'll just get d d x of psi l of x plus e i alpha psi right of x. Okay. But this is just a derivative of a sum, so it's just the sum of the derivatives, and this alpha does not depend on x in any way, so we get again minus i check dx of now here we can put already the wave function so let's put here one over two there was here one over square root of two missing so here we can put psi l chuk 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 of x plus e to the i alpha Of x and now here come sorry d d x of say l of x plus e to the i alpha d d x of say r of x okay good but now we run into exactly the same situation. So we're going to have um, we're going to have this four different terms, where two of these do not depend on the phase, and the ones that depend on the phase they're going to cancel zero again, because again the the wave functions are so far away 
that when this one is non-zero, this one is zero, and all its derivatives are also zero. Okay. So the only terms that survive, so it's going to be again the same idea, one over two, the x, and the only terms that survive are x, dx of say l of x plus right dx of right of x okay which you can even uh rewrite as kind of like this, psi L, P, psi L plus psi P, right, psi right. Okay, it's the same as here. This, this term that survives up here, well, one over two. This term that survives here is one over two of psi L x psi L. And this term over here that survives is also going to be one over two psi right x psi right. right. Okay. So again, for the exactly same reason, also does not depend on alpha. So it doesn't tell us anything about interference. So the one that will tell us something about interference, which we'll do next time, but you can already think about it, is precisely what uh, we did last time. For a very different reason, we looked at this modular momentum uh, operator because it helped us understand what happens when you have uh, a measurement, right? And if we look at this now, which is what we'll do in the next lecture, we'll see that this indeed, uh, it's going to depend, I think by this, is going to depend exactly on the phase. So this is kind of the observable that we can use in the past to tell us about the future interference. So we will look into this and explain it. And we'll also do path one, which is a normal, um, uh, the normal evolution of the wave function of the two free particles to see the actual interference happen. And we'll also see, uh, look at what happens if there is a measurement. But in the meantime, what you can do if you like this topic is to watch Sandu uh, Popescu's lecture, which I'll put on YouTube uh, now. Okay, thanks very much and see you next week. <laughs>